Hello everybody, Aris Salehi is here and today we are, I am here with you guys with another video of anatomy sculpting series, sculpting foods. Let's start with a sphere and dynamish. As you see at the beginning, I start uh, to form the uh, shape of the head from the bottom or top and you see here there is a nice shape here if i wanted to simplify that uh, this shape and it comes here and connects to this one this is the shape the geometrical and very rough shape of the feet if you have this shape right you have a good base and foundation and you can continue and build on top of that I use clicker brush to flatten the, the bottom part of the feet and I use a mask to extrude out uh, the parts that's related to the leg, lower leg and the other thing that I want to talk about is here top of the feet we have a very nice round shape that comes towards the uh, it's basically big toe and it's very round and nice this area the remaining area here is almost flat it's a nice transition here between these two shape and here it becomes flat but here on the side part change the color okay, here this part there is a fat pad here uh, to bear weight to our bear our weight and it's basically all around the uh, uh, feet on the bottom of on the bottom side of that are fat pads. We need to consider that later when I'm sculpting that I will show you guys. I'm making a transition between that uh, tube shape and see right now I was sculpting the fat pad on the side and I'm starting to sculpt the Achilles tendon on the back the border of that and when we look at from the side view there is a very important bone uh, remember when you are sculpting feet the back of the feet is not flat we have this protrusion and basically this bump here and what is it for is because of the bone that exists here in the like the bone its name is is like this, it comes here, this name is Cal. Okay, yes, if I am right, Calcaneus. Calcaneus, this bone is here, and it's round, and its head is almost uh, a spherical shape. And it pushed the surface and the skin back, and there are a lot of fat pads here or surrounding that. Okay, the thing that I am sculpting here is a muscle. Here, this one. It's called a doctor Alicious. At uh, abductor, abductor, abductor. Helicious. Helicious in anatomy means big toe. This muscle, uh, one head of that is uh, attached to the calcaneus that we talked about it. This bone that is here and goes here, it attaches to here and the other parts of that 
it attached to the first flanges of the uh, big toe to the base of that so it helps uh, it's uh, our basically big toe to uh, move uh, and rotate uh, from the other uh, finger besides uh, other fingers and uh, other toes besides that thing that I'm sculpting here this part is the neck is one of the meta uh, is one of the uh, tarsals tarsal and uh, the bones that are on the wrist on the hand they call it carpal but these bones on the uh, feet they call it tarsal we have on the hand meta uh, carpals and on the uh, Foot, we have metatarsals. The metatarsals are here, and there are five of them. But the tarsals, this one is very important for us because it makes surface form. And the name of this tarsal is navicular. This is uh, important because it makes a uh, uh, basically surface form for us, and it exists in front of the um, basically the ankle. That's medial ankle. This is medial. That's uh, basically anatomy term for and basic ankle is malleolus. If I am right, malleolus. Malleolus. Medial malleolus is this part. Is part of the tibia. Is part of the tibia. Yep. See, I'm adding fat pads here in this area on, over the calcaneus head. And I'm changing the proportions constantly to make sure that everything is right. As I'm going forward and adding landmarks. It's very important to look at your model from different angles. Adding more fat pads in this area and the heel area. The other thing that I want to talk about with you guys, the lower leg doesn't connect to the feet in a sharp way. We have a nice transition here. What is this transition for? Is uh, this transition is because of this. Uh, some bands, uh, some uh, some kind of bands, bandage shape things that exist here, and they cover all of the tendons that they goes towards the feet. So and they grab them together and put them together. These bandages here, because of that we have this transition here, and the name of these bandages are. Uh, Retinaculum, and there's this term is a uh, Latin term, and it comes from the meaning of retain. It's retaining. Retinaculum, these bandages that are here and make this nice smooth transition for us between the lower leg and the foot. Okay, I'm sculpting the lateral malleolus. Lateral means outside. Lateral malleolus. And the lateral malleolus is related to fibula. Fibula. Fibula bone. And fibula bone, when it comes down, usually this side the back side is a little bit more straight in comparison to that front side and the 
front side is more angular and here the retinaculum uh, parts that we talked about them they attach to here and here we have a very really nice transition we don't see that much of bone on the surface here so here this is the and fibula but here we have a nice transition the part that is very sharp and we see it very uh, uh, visible is very visible and we can see it uh, clearly is this part and this part remember this part is more straight this part is more angular usually when you look at the feet uh, the lateral part or the outside of that you see a triangular shape here is because of this this two things besides each other the bone and these bandages see so yeah, I'm sculpting that bandage here that covers the tendons that they go to the toward the feet from the lower leg and the muscle that I am sculpting here this muscle is egg shape this muscle passes tendons to its fingers uh, to number and to toes number two to number five number two number two uh, toe number two is the toe besides the big toe and number five is the smallest one here it passes tendon toward them the name of that is extensor digitorum brevis uh, when you whenever you see digiterum digiterum in that uh, in uh, the name of any of the muscles in anatomy it means that it goes to the digits it passes tendon to the digits uh, toes or fingers and brevis means a smallest one every time when you see a small brevis definitely there is a longus so it's the uh, uh, the longest ones, it has a very clear and obvious tendon and I will sculpt it later and I will show you guys. So remember, we need to sculpt this one and this extensor digital and brevis make a surface form for us. Okay, right now I started to sculpt a tendon but this is not for extensor digital and longest. There are two tendons that comes from the uh, they're very obviously, definitely there are a lot, but two of them that are very obvious, they come towards uh, from the basically lower leg toward the feet and it goes toward the side, this one. The name of that is tibialis anterior, anterior tendon. This is the uh, tendon of the muscle that is exactly adjacent and besides that uh, tibia. And anterior means in, in one of the terms of the anatomy is in front. Opposite of that, anterior, posterior. And the other one that I talk to you guys, the other tendon is this one. I will sculpt it later and the name of that as I mentioned, extensor, extensor, DG, Torum, Langus, Tendon. And there is a nice gap between these two. And let me show you. Yep, here. Let me show you with another color. Oops. But maybe I change the color. Okay, here. See? There is a nice gap between these two tendons and they make a triangular shape here in front of the leg. Yeah, I started to do the sculpt that's extensoral uh, digital longest tendon too. 
at the beginning when I start to sculpt, uh, I try to exaggerate on the things that I'm sculpting, bony landmarks, tendon, whatever, muscles, and after that I start to smooth them out. So in this way, it's, they are more visible, but still I have a, a smooth surface. So I start to make the toes. This is the place that right now I'm sculpting, is the place that the uh, first flange of the toe starts. And the shape of the bones. The shape of the bones, remember, is like this. Not all of the bones, but bones that we have on the finger and uh, basically on the foot. Tarsals, flanges. This is the tarsal here. Metat sorry, it's metatarsal. And these are flanges that start from here. There you go. It comes here. Next one starts from here and it goes toward the tip. So because, the, because of this shape, we add two balls for sculpting of each knuckle. And after that, I smooth it out. Remember the bottom part, we have a nice arc shape, it's not a straight. I draw that arc and this is the fat pad that is related to the first and second uh, toe. I'm sculpting that. Again, remember, draw a lot of fat pads underneath, of, and, uh, underneath and on the side of the foot to help us to bear the weight of the body. here for I use a technique for creating that uh, nails I mask the nails and build up around it sometimes I add sometimes I subtract to get the shape that I'm looking for and the other thing that I need to mention here remember for the first knuckles uh, then the place that the uh, nails are placed for the toes, we need to sculpt them. The shape of them usually will be like this a bit shape. If you try to make this bit shape for them, from the top view and from the side view, usually, for example, for the bigger toe, it's like this a little bit goes upward and here and if you have a nice indentation here again we can sell it nicer and more it will be more basically aesthetically beautiful so here see this nice curve here and it goes upward for the first toe but for the other ones, this um, angle is lower a little bit, a little bit more straight. But for the first toe, it goes upwards. But remember, this one, this wedge shape from the top view is very important. Okay, it's in the, I am working on the metatarsal and navicular and at mm, adductor delicious sculpting that and trying to smooth out the transition between the adductor delicious and the first metatarsal see again I'm adding more fat pads on the side of the foot and 
And in that part, we have a little bit indentation on the bottom of foot, comparison to the other parts. Still, I am working on the metatorso, first metatorso. Okay, so the other thing that I want to talk about that is this bony protrusions. What is it for? It's related to the fifth metatorso. Uh, which is related to the basically pinky not pinky sorry this uh, the smallest toe here on the side this bone the beginning of that it has uh, it makes a great uh, surface form and it's, it's basically uh, make a bone make a pet bump on the lateral side of the foot. See here. From the top. Yeah, right now I was adjusting that. This part that I'm sculpting is related to the calcaneus. It has a little bit bump on the side, on the bottom of the basically ankles, on both mid medial and lateral ankle. So it's a little bit bony protrusion related to the calcaneus. It makes it a little bit tiny surface form for us. Okay, it's Achilles tendon. I try to fix that, the shape. Okay, extensor dig digiturum brevis. X shape. The tendon of extensor digiturum longus. Mostly I'm using st st standard, demi-standard, clay build-up, move brush, sometimes inflate brush and edge polish. To sculpting feet and hands you need to know that uh, bones, if you study the bones ends and how they look like, they will help you to sculpt. Uh, it's both of this part of the body easier. So right now I'm creating the surface form related uh, to the other ten toes. From t this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five. This is number one. So uh, it's, what is the shape related to them? There is a nice sweep here, it's like this for all of them except the last one is one it doesn't have the middle part usually it just comes down but for other ones one upwards the face, this one, the second is a little angular and the third one is again upwards remember that nice gesture for the toes from number two to number five and the last thing here I want to talk about it on this slide if the fingers start from here the toes sorry it's the proportion of that the second knuckle will be in the middle if we divide this distance to half, this is one third, and the third knuckle usually is around here, not here, sorry, let's clean it. This is the first and a little bit further, and if we divide against this distance to half, imagine this is the one third to half, it gives us 
against that uh, third knuckle. But right now my proportion is not right in this uh, slide. I will fix that and later again I will show you guys. So remember to divide it by half to reach uh, from the beginning of that uh, each toe to reach the second uh, knuckle and from the second knuckle again if you divide the distance that is exist to the tip of the toe by half you reach to the third knuckle right now i was just uh, fixing the gesture in this at this moment and later i start to fix the proportion And the first knuckle starts a little bit before the separation of the toes. Right. Yeah, see, right now it's the proportion that I talked about it with you guys. Almost half, and the remaining half divided by half, and it gives you the third knuckle. So, it's from top. Again, it's a nice transition between the navicular art, tarsal and also the medial lateral lalis, malleolus, medial malleolus, yeah, the ankle. See the proportion again? Here one, and here if it's again the same as the other part, divided by half. Okay, because right now it's, uh, my mesh is a dyna mesh and I don't have subdivision level, I couldn't uh, separate the fingers from each other but I use dummy standard to have it, um, some kind of a hint of a separation and division between them but later I will show you guys the technique that I use for uh, dyna mesh to separate these fingers from each other and make a low res mesh with a subdivision level out of that. The other thing that you need to keep in mind about the toes, the first toe is almost uh, the f from the top view, uh, the tip of that is uh, very sharp and rectangular shape, but the second one it's a little bit goes towards round shape, the, the next one is more sharper and the last one is completely sharp. Remember this one too. Okay, this is the bony part that I told you is related to the metatarsal of uh, that toe number five. This toe number five, like the smallest one. Stem standard and for the nails, remember to look at them from different angles. From the top view, there is a nice curve on the front and the back. And it tapers down from the back side. Here is more wider in comparison to here. But from the front view, the mistakes that uh, usually the beginners do, it they makes it uh, nail completely flat like this is wrong you need to make it like this this is the way that the nail is from the front view remember that and from the side view it creates a nice triangular shape and here it goes underneath of the basically the skin and here the skin that is covering that part that's the remaining of the finger to whatever is that there you go usually when I want to make that nail, uh, nail liner I mask the front part of the toe and use a move out brush to make it longer 
If you look at here, the curve from the front view. And then placing the bones, the same thing that I told you guys. Two round shape here and connecting them together. This is again, remember the proportion. One, one, they are the same and half of that is the third knuckle. And the tip of the toes are very round because there are a lot of fat pads there, again for bearing our, the weight of the body. So they are very round and there are a lot of fat pads that exist there. I'm still adding the knuckles and basically sculpting the shape of the toes. Soon I start to make the separation between the fingers, the actual separation, and remesh it to have subdivision levels adding nails for the other parts this is another technique that I use sometimes I mask it and use the 3D gizmo and basically it's pull them out and a little bit push them in and pull them out to make the shape of the finger and after that use the time standard to uh, make it more defined okay, this part that you see here again this is the other head of the same bone here metatarsal, fifth metatarsal the both two head of that is very obvious on the side so here I use the brush that is really helpful I increase the resolution of the dynamic, but I use uh, if I am right with the name of the brush, Move Dynamic. Uh, this brush is really good, and specifically when you have a very dense brush, dense mesh, and you want to make a hole or some kind of separation into that, that Move Dynamic helps you to do that. With the normal Move brush. It's really tough to do that, but this one is really awesome for this purpose. Move dynamic, you can find it on your brushes list. Okay, I'm using move dynamic and smooth brush, the combination of these two to make this separation. And besides that, if you see I am Redynamishing and remeshing the mesh by holding control and dragging on the empty space of the canvas. So there are other ways to make a, make a foot and they are much easier. If you want you can use it, for example using Z-Sphere or maybe having uh, the base mesh uh, creating in Maya or th other 3D packages and bring it here and start to sculpt on top of that but I wanted to show you that it's possible to sculpt with uh, the basically start with the, the sphere and the dynamic to achieve uh, a complete fit with uh, subdivision levels And remember, for the feet, uh, for the toes, we have webbings the same as the fingers. The bottom parts of the fingers are basically forwards, more forward in comparison to the top parts of that, and it causes a webbing underneath of that. So right now I made the lowest, but I didn't like it the way that it was because on the fingers. On the toes, I didn't get set, mm, 
topology that I wanted, the direction was it good. I right now I use the uh, basically zero emission guide brush to make that create the guides and zero mesh it. So right now the result is much better. But if you want more cleaner, uh, you have to take it to 3D packages and uh, basically make the low res mesh there and bring it back and project the high res detail on it and finalize it here in ZBrush. So this part was a little bit too forward. I fixed that and right now I'm making different polygroups for different toes. It's very important for both feet and hands to have different polygroups for different toes and fingers. So later you can work on them individually and it makes your job much easier. So for that purpose to making polygroups, uh, it's um, basically start to make a selection and um, basically hide the parts that I don't need them. I start with a small part of a finite toe and after that hit Ctrl Shift and X to basically expand uh, the visibility and the selection that I already have to reach the end of the toe and after that hit Ctrl W to make it new polygroup. Remember, Control Shift X. So I felt that the toe was very, basically the height of that was too much. So I decreased that. And working on the, for the nails, I am using two brushes, Dami Standard and also uh, inflate brush, inflate brush for the root of the uh, nails to make and uh, to add more a little basically more meat on that area uh, it's because the nails goes underneath of the uh, skin so I wanted to mimic that by using the inflate brush to add a bump there So I'm refining the mess that it caused basic, basically because of using Dynamesh and uh, it's Move Dynamic brush to make everything nice and clean. See it? I'm, I add that's more bump in the root of the uh, nail with Inflate brush. I'm using them as clay build up to add more fat pads on this uh, last knuckle of the toes as I mentioned to you guys because this is the part that uh, is in contact with the floor and ground. The other some parts of the toes, the second and the third are not contacting and in touch with the ground. Another thing that I want to talk about it here is this part. Uh, when you're sculpting either hand, it doesn't matter if it's hand or uh, it's uh, fits all of them, the fingers you should sculpt them in a way that reach to each other in a point, maybe a little bit further or closer, but all of the fingers should have a gesture that reach to each other later or sooner so they shouldn't be spread out this is one of the gestures that you need to keep in mind both for fingers of the hands and toes of the foot so right now I am doing that and I'm fixing that part rotating the toes a little bit Yep, inflate brush to add that bump in the root. There you go. Fixing the proportion. And 
finally it's the fifth toe the smallest one and it's a little bit weird the shape of that Time is centered and threaten is very flat. So I mask it, I move brush, extend it, and again, time is centered. Clay build up to fix that area and inflate brush to add more. I forgot to add more fat pads underneath of the second toe. So right now I came back and adding that parts and that fat pads to that toe. Making the transitions more smooth and nice. this video I try to not go too much on the details that basically the wrinkles that falls I try to talk more about the fundamental and the basics of the food so I'm sure that all of you can uh, look at your own feet and or maybe a picture and add that wrinkles and folds that you want but the important parts are these fundamentals that we talked about it and I'm talking it still so it's at the end when I'm almost satisfied with everything I add it and it's basically every team box underneath of my feet to make sure that the parts that they need to contact to the floor they are actually contacting and they are lining up with each other Still I am making the transitions between different parts more smoother and nicer. Make a separation between the fat pad of the uh, uh, behind the foot and the muscle that we talked about it, abductor helicious. This this one. I'm still sculpting on it. Retinacular limbs, extensor stitch serum, previous, and this is the final result. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something out of that, and have a great day.